Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is here plotting tutorials using Matplotlib in Python. Now in this tutorial, we will be looking at an option called a subplot to grid, which, which actually ag helps us to make subplots in a much more easier and convenient manner. See, in the last few video, last two videos, we were looking at subplots, and uh, over there, to create a subplot, we have to follow uh, the you have to follow the configuration notation, wherein you have to specify uh, the figure number in a particular row column configuration. This could be a bit confusing, especially for especially for beginners who are just trying to get their hands uh, who, are who are trying to get their hands around the subplot option. So instead, uh, for instead to make it a little more simpler and also to make it more understandable, subplot to grid command is useful. What it does is that it makes it just has only one configuration uh, and makes you draw the plot easily. Before I go on further, I think I'll just illustrate this easily. Uh, thereby, it made sense. Subplot to grid is like this. So imagine you have a figure figure over here you have a figure over here and you have a plot like this or oh, you have one plot two plot three plot and four plot over here naturally this is your plot one this is your plot two plot three and plot four the way subplot does the way subplot to grid does is that it'll it'll and, and look at how many figures how many plots there are okay and how arranged in how many rows and how many columns so this is row zero the reason why I'm using row zero is because in subplot it uses an indexing indexing notation so it follows rows so this is row zero and this is row one this is column zero um, column zero and this is column one column one so the in so the coordinate for this uh, figure which is one is actually zero comma zero so this is one comma zero, and this is zero comma one, and this is one comma one. So in subplot to grid, what it actually does is that you you set one configuration and you specify the figures just by the coordinates. Okay, specify the axis of these I mean specify the axis of the plots by the coordinates, and uh, this actually makes it much more easier to work. Is it actually makes it much more easier to work with because imagine all the fig uh, all the plots to have the same size. Same size arranged in a arranged in a row column configuration like this one, and you're able to pick each figure by the by the coordinate notation by just by looking at the row position and the column position. Okay, this is much this is actually much more simpler. Okay, and in hindsight, when after come looking at sub the plain subplots, it's actually much simpler. Okay, so this is what this is what will happen. Now to start the working working with this, let me. Uh, explain you guys explain you all with the program i already written this program i'm just keeping it next to me so i'm just going to copy this and paste it so first let's look at a simple uh, simple figure a simple subplot figure with no call no row or column span so i'm going to create a simple figure uh, a figure and a figure label i mean figure handle fig one okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this particular text uh, code over here and paste it Okay, so here what we're going to do is from once you created the figure object, okay, we are using this ax1, okay, and creating a an access creating an access handle for plot one, and instead of using subplot, I write subplot to grid, okay, and then I have to pass two arguments over here, I mean two yeah two arguments. First is the shape argument that defines the configuration of the subplot, and then the location of this plot. I mean as to which plot I'm actually referring to. So if I use subplot to grid and I put shape two comma two, it's it's this is actually no, this is actually this configuration over here where are, there are four where there are four plots arranged in two rows and two columns and this is the configuration so this is the shape two comma two means four plots in arranged in two rows and two columns and location zero comma zero specifies it means we are actually referring to the uh, figure I mean on the plot in the zeroth row and zeroth column. So essentially, we are referring to the. Uh, we are essentially, we are here. We are referring to zero comma zero. We are referring to this particular figure over here, the top uh, left figure. I mean, top left plot, not the figure. Top left plot. Okay. And over here, I just introduced this text option over here. This is actually text balloon that with which you can just write a simple text with no annotation, just plain text on the plot. 
okay using the axis handle i specify the x coordinate as the 0.5 and y coordinate to be 0 0.5 so this will be at the center and the text i'm going to write is ax1 so instead i can write plot1 as, as well and i'm using vertical alignment and horizontal alignment so that the sent text what i've written okay that instead of starting at exactly at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 the center of the text will be at uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so to make get this bit running uh, let me just uh, copy or copy some lines at the bottom um okay so this will actually give me the subplot with the title and then this will put make sure that there will be there is sufficient space and this i put this little option over here so that there is a little bit of space on the top so that the title appears distinctively and then i put a show option over here to show the plot and now if i run this there we go i get the i get this uh, first figure first subplot figure over here first subplot over here Okay, I have the entire figure and I have the axis label. So instead of these values, okay, instead of this text, okay, you can actually copy paste all your copy. Uh, I mean, you can actually write your plot and then write, I mean, write the command to do the plot and you can also add um, the X label, Y label, figure, text and all of that. It's all possible. So this text is actually just a placeholder. You can do that. And similarly, I similarly to fill the remaining four plots in this and it's I'm going to copy paste this this one over here creates another handle for the subplot to, in the subplot to grid and instead of 2 comma 2 I mean in, in, the, in the same configuration I'm referring to uh, the plot I mean the figure in the zero row first column here I'm referring to the uh, plot in the first row zeroth column and here I'm referring to the figure in the some of the figure plot in the first row first column thereby this will give me four figures I mean four plots in one figure so if I run this there we go there we go so this is figure plot one plot two plot three and plot four all nicely arranged okay if I were to put labels and labels and ticks and ticks and all because of this tight layout it will just rearrange accordingly and we can act and here I can use the object handles I mean the figure handles I mean the I mean the object handles to draw the draw the plots of my choice. Okay, and this is actually part one of this part one of this video. Uh, in this in this video, the second part I'll talk about the column spans and row spans. So sometimes, so sometimes what what might be the condition is that you might have to make a figure that is uh, that will occup that is uh, that can be. Where is my yeah. So you might have to make a figure that can occupy multiple columns and rows positions. For instance, let's say, let's say this is my figure. I mean, this is my figure, and I have um, a, a condition like this, wherein you can be of any choice. Wherein you see the first plot, the first figure comes over here. Second comes, I mean, first plot comes over here. Second plot comes over here. Third plot comes over here. Fourth comes over here. Fifth comes over here. Sixth comes over here. Now, if I look at it, this figure, this one figure over here, this is actually spanning three columns. This act, this figure over here is actually spanning three columns. Okay, this one over here spans two columns. If I put them in a three by three configuration, if I put them in a three by three configuration. This uh, this figure, figure number five, spans two columns. Six uh, six spans only one column, whereas these three could span one row and one column each. Okay. Sometimes in a particular uh, in certain figures, the the one we that we're going to see in the see now. Okay. There is one figure over here, and the other figure over here, and there is another figure over here. And there are two small figures over here. So this is okay. In this case, this is again a three by three configuration. So this is one figure. This is a figure. Figure one. I mean, plot one, two, three, four, five. You can name it as per your convenience, whatever it be. So this actually spans three rows. This spans one row. I mean, this. I mean, this actually spans three columns. Let me put this. Uh, the first plot actually spans three uh, columns. Whereas the plot, th I mean, plot figure three spans. I mean, the plot three spans uh, two two rows, but one it stays in one column. Two uh, figure, I mean, plot two actually spans two columns, but it stays in one uh, row. 
Here, 4 and 5, uh, they actually span one row and one column each. Okay, so if you want to do this kind of stuff, the row span, column span options are very useful. So let's try to re recreate this particular this particular figure over here. Okay, it looks it's actually fairly simple. So I'm just going to copy copy all this, copy the code over here, and let me paste it over here, and walk you through what's happening. So this figure over here, zero comma, I mean this part figure over here, zero comma zero. Okay, this will occupy one row, I mean it will occupy only one row and it will span through three columns. Okay, uh, let me uh, you know, comment out, uh, let me delete all this. Okay, this figure will occupy one row but it will span three columns. So if I run this over here, I will get the first figure and this is the second figure. This is the second figure. Here, this in this figure, uh, the, this plot actually occupies only one row but uh, occupies all the three columns. Now, if I, now what I'll, what can I do is let's uh, let's uh, add this one and add this one this figure the, the second fig I mean second plot over here which is actually located one comma zero so it's actually actually the first row zeroth column this will occupy only one row but it will span two columns span two columns okay so there it there it is this this plot over here is occupying the in the first row. It's only spanning one row, but it occupies two columns, spanning over two columns. So this is actually a figure two. Likewise, proceeding further, proceeding further, this figure over here, this will this will occupy two rows, but it'll span only one column, and this is figure number uh, plot number three. There you go. This one occupies only one uh, column, but it occupies uh, occupies one column, but it spans across two rows. Likewise, in the remaining two spots, I can actually place these two. Place these two. For these, the default row span and column span is just one, so you don't have to specific, explicitly, explicitly specify that. But nevertheless, if I run this part over here, there um, after first first one, there we go. We have all of them ready over here. So this is how you make. Uh, this is how you use. Uh, you know, subplot to subplot to grid to make different subplots. So instead of these text, instead of these axis handles, okay, over here, this text, uh, you can actually uh, copy, you can actually use the object handles to draw the, draw the plot, um, draw the plots, and that will, that will make sure that everything is working, everything is working fine, uh, all right, and uh, this way, you can actually span multiple, um, you can actually uh, custom build your own, uh, uh, custom build your own, uh, plot con configuration without having to work without having to work with uh, the previous cases this is actually much simpler next video i'll talk about grid spec or grid specifications that will help you to make your job a little more simpler when compared to this one actually this is more intuitive but there's a little coding uh, there's a little it involves a little bit of coding In the next one i'll talk about grid spec wherein you'll be using a uh, grid hand uh, grid spec handles to create multiple plots multiple plots Alright, so that's all I have for you all in this video, in this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Uh, till then, take care.